Hello everybody, Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv and today I'm going to be explaining to you how to use the frame plugin with Tween Max and Tween Lite and also the frame label plugin. Now these interesting plugins allow you to tween a timeline. Um, it's very cool because you can not only tell a timeline to play to a certain frame or frame label, but you can tell it how long it's going to take for it to play and you can also have those frames ease in or ease out. Um, and even more importantly, you can play a timeline backwards, which surprisingly is not a native feature of Flash, um, but with the GreenSock tweening platform, things that are seemingly simple um, are, unlike with native AS3. So here's one example we're going to be looking at. And you'll notice that when I roll over this button, I am playing an animation, and more importantly, when I roll off of it, that animation is playing backwards. All right, so my little snorkel guy jumps out of the hole, and then he will jump back in. I'm going to be showing you later how to use the frame label plugin, where I have this little uh, counter set up, and each one of these digits here, let's just go into it, has a very advanced timeline of all these numbers flipping down. And you'll notice in my timeline here that various frames are labeled. So when we show go from 6 to 7, 7 to 8, that's all built frame by frame on the timeline. When I test this file out, you'll see that I can tell each one of those digits which frame to go to. All right, and so it will play to the proper frame and we can control the timing. So let's start off with our little hole jumper. And again, roll over the button, the animation plays, roll off of it, and it plays in reverse. All right, I have a start file here that has a button on the stage called Play MC. And there's also my jumper guy, which is in this movie clip right here. Um, there's nothing on frame one, so it just appears to be a blank movie clip. I'm going to go into my library now and double click on the jumper symbol. And you'll see here, if we can just scroll down a little bit and over, that we have a fairly complex timeline of this hole opening up. And then this dude jumps out of the hole. The hole closes and then he falls down. You'll notice also that the drop shadow, that the shadow that he's casting is uh, growing and getting a little bit bolder. And then he does a little bit of, bit of a spring action at the end there. So you could use tween max, tween light to do all of this animation, uh, but sometimes, you know, you want to use the timeline, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. So I have him jumping out of the hole, and I also want him to play this animation backwards. So let's just see here that my animation ends at frame number 52, okay? Back in scene one, I want to roll over my play button and tell this symbol here called jumper MC to play all the way to frame number 52. So I'm going to go to my actions frame and you'll see here that we have, let's just pull the sucker up and slide over and open, that I have some basic code in here already. I'm importing the green sock classes and the easing functions. Um, I have button mode set to true on my play movie clip so that I can get the hand cursor. Um, and we have event listeners for roll over and roll out. When I roll over that button, we're going to call the animate out function. And when I roll out, we're going to animate back. And when I say animate out, I mean animate out of the hole. That could probably be named a little bit better, but so what? All right. I'm going to be using Tween Max, so that means that I do not need to activate any plugins. When using Tween Lite, you will have to activate the plugins, and you can watch my Plugin Explorer video if you need help with that. I'll show you a little bit about this later on in the movie, but let's show you the easiest, quickest way to do this. I'm going to tell Tween Max to go ahead, excuse me, and do a Tween Max 2. A certain frame. So I'm going to say tween max dot two. All right. And we're going to tell the jumper MC to take 1.1 seconds 
that's a one point one there. And we're simply going to say go to frame 52. Now, let's just see how this works. And when I roll over, he jumps out of the hole. Well, you may be saying, Carl, well, why don't you just tell that movie clip to play? It's no big deal to make a movie clip play forward. Well, using the frame plugin, I have the ability to change the amount of time it's going to take to play that animation. If we go back to my jumper here, you will see that at the current frame rate, it's going to take 1.1 seconds, look down here, to play this animation. So using my code, I'm telling it to play exactly the way that it has been designed at the exact same speed. But I could make this number 0.5, and now this animation will play very fast. All right, when I roll over, he's already played, he's already there. So we'll test this one more time, and you'll notice that now it only takes half a second for him to jump out of the hole. So I can speed that up or even slow that down. I can say, you know what, why don't you take five seconds? It's going to be in total slow motion now. Boom, 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 boom. All right, so there you go. Using the frame label plugin, I can change the amount of time that a timeline-based animation takes to complete. Roll over. And I've totally slowed it down. Now, for him jumping out of the hole, I really want him to be play at the same speed that I designed it for. So 1.1 seconds. There we go. Now, when I roll off the button, I want the animation to play backwards. And it's just mind-boggling that with Flash, there is no default out of the way, out of the box way to make a timeline play backwards. You would have to create an on-enter frame event and say, go to the previous frame and then loop through that until you get to the beginning, then it's really just um, silly. But with the frame label plugin, we can very, we can just tell it what frame to go to. And if that frame is before the frame that we're currently on, it's smart enough to know that it's gonna play backwards. So on animate back, I'm just gonna copy and paste my first little tween max code there and instead of going to frame 52, I'm going to say frame number one. So now I have an animation playing forwards and backwards. So he jumps out of the hole, and then he jumps back into the hole. It's all very playful. It's all very fun. And I sort of want that animation of him jumping back into the hole to be a little bit quicker. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm just going to go ahead and say, let's jump back into the hole in 0.4 seconds. All right, so it's going to be really slick. Jumps out of the hole, jumps back in. That might be a little bit too quick. But again, we have the ability to play with these numbers. Maybe I'll say 0.6. And there we go. All right, so there's one example of the frame plugin, where we just pass in a frame number. Now, the frame label plugin works in a similar fashion. It's just that we use frame labels. And let's watch the demo one more time of this you'll see that we have three digits that doing, are doing their flip animation while all three digits are scaling and bouncing a little bit. All right, so very quickly, um, let's go to my start file. And here we have on the stage a movie clip called All Digits MC. Inside of that movie clip, we have D1 for digit one, we have D2 and D3. They are all instances of the same symbol called digit. And again, each one of these digits has a very complex timeline of all of these numbers flipping down. All right, and it works pretty cool. So what I'm gonna do is tell each digit to flip to a particular frame label. So let's go to the scene one, frame one. We're gonna go to the actions and I'm going to do a little tween max dot two, and I'm going to say tell the all digits MC. Inside of there we have D1 MC. Um, let's take about 1.5 seconds, and we're going to go to the frame of uh, three, not there. 
three. Okay, close off that curly, silly me, frame label. All right, you see it, we went to the number three. Let's make that take four seconds and let's go to the number nine. And so there you can see that I'm taking four seconds to go to the number nine. All right, we're gonna roll this back to be 1.5 and we'll go to frame label three one more time. All right, so now the first digit is flipping through its animation to the frame labeled three. Now for the other two frames, you know, I'm just gonna do a little copy paste and you'll see here that now we're telling the second digit to take a little bit longer to go to frame label six. And the third digit is taking 1.6 seconds to go to frame level five. I've mixed up the time it takes just slightly to give it a little bit of an organic feel. So now you'll see that all three numbers flip through and you have this really nice bouncy flip animation. If we wanna make that animation grow and scale, well, we're just gonna copy and paste another little line of code here. Again, this should be review for you guys who've watched all my videos. We're just gonna tell the container clip called All Digits MC to take two seconds to scale from X values of zero and scale Y values of zero, end from a Y of 200, and we'll do a little bounce ease out. And so now you have that nice little bounce effect, and you have this nice cool little number flipper. All right. So again, frame and frame label plugins are really cool for tweening timelines. Um, also, this little clip that I've got here um, that has the digits, um, this is a component that I bought off of Active Dan called uh, Countdown Flip, and it starts out like this. And I bought this plugin because for a job I was working on, I needed a number flipper, and I certainly didn't want to spend hours building this myself. And you'll find a lot of times that um, if you have to pay eight bucks for something out of the box that works and does exactly what you want, it's much better than spending multiple hours trying to build it yourself. So this is countdownflip.swf uh, that comes with the components. And as such, I can't give you the uh, number flipper file as a download because I can't include somebody's paid component. Uh, but if you want to check it out, you can go to... Uh, Active Den, and here's the customizable countdown flipper. It is an action script two file. Um, it does some really neat little countdown tricks, totally customizable. The documentation is incredible. Um, but really, I just needed it for the single digit flipping animation, and it really served uh, its purpose for me. Uh, so you can do a uh, search of Active Den for customizable countdown flip. I'll try to link this up on my site if you want that file. Uh, but I'll give you the whole jumper, and uh, you can download it and mess around with it. Um, in the two seconds remaining, let me just show you guys about activating plugins in Tween Lite. So remember that I used Tween Max for this example, and if we go to the Tween Lite Max Plugin Explorer, if I was using Tween Lite and I was concerned about file size, um, to use Frame Label, I would click right here, and I would get the activation code that I would need um, to import the plugins and then activate the frame label plugin. Um, the example that Jack Doyle gives us is awesome here. Um, it gives us a little uh, screenshot of a flash timeline. And when I hit tween, you can see that the playhead advances through to label two. Um, and also it's using a bounce ease out. So we can actually put easing on uh, the frames as they play. You'll notice that the playhead goes to frame two and then it bounces back a little bit. Uh, so that effect can be really helpful to you as well. So again, just a little uh, quickie on using another plugin in the powerful GreenSock tweening platform. If you got any questions, fire away. I'd love to help you. All right, folks, have a great day. Bye-bye.